The Aeroflot Open Tournament has just concluded, and the winner is none other than the Estonian Grandmaster Kaido Kolaus. He definitely surprised everyone since he was ranked number 62 heading into this event in a field of 101 players. But what's more impressive is that he had 5 games with the black pieces and managed to win 4 of them. Instead of showing you his last round victory, which was a long and tough grind in a queen and pawn ending, I'm going to show you one of his victories with the black side. This game was played against the Iranian prodigy Alireza Faruja. Faruja had white and he opened with e4. Sicilian defense from Kalauts. We have knight f3, d6, d4. Pawn takes, knight takes, knight to f6. Knight c3 and here a6. Kalauts goes for the Nidorf. And here Faruja played h3. And this is a line popularized by Bobby Fischer. Fischer played this against Miguel Nydorf in 1962 and proceeded to crush Nydorf in just 24 moves. So this is not a line to be underestimated. This line gives white a lot of flexibility. White of course is intending to go g4, but here the king can go either queenside or kingside. Usually if white decides to castle kingside, there will be a bishop fianchetto on g2. So here, black continued with e6, we have g4, knight after d7, anticipating g5, we have g5, b5, a3, stopping black from going b4, here bishop to e7, looking at this pawn, so h4, we have bishop b7, bishop to e3, castles from black, queen d2, preparing to castle, knight c6, the main move here for white is to castle queenside. But Faruja played knight takes c6, and then he castled. And with this move, we reach into unknown territory. However, this is a bit risky for white, since with this bishop now on c6, black is no longer blocked on the a and b files, and Kolaus takes advantage of this with the move queen to b8, and this is a good move. Black is now ready to start pushing his queenside pawns. Bruja played f3, so understandably he wants to secure the e4 pawn. White can try h5 in this position, but that doesn't seem to amount to much. Black will carry on with a5, and after h6, simply g6. White has no attack, and the threat of b4 is going to be quite annoying to deal with. So here g6 also possible, but black carries on b4. h6 would create maximum chaos, but black is still better. Obviously not takes, this would lose to g takes h7. The king would be completely exposed and this will be very good for white. But here f takes g6. This is messy, but black, I believe, is still better in this position. So back to the game, f3 was played, we have a5, and now with the threat of b4, black is better. g6 played, but here b4, black can safely ignore the pawn on g6. Knight to b1, d5, now opening up the position. This bishop now looking at the a3 pawn. We have g takes f7 check, rook takes, bishop to h3, looking at e6, so knight to f8, defending. Black is reasonably solid here, with the knight and rook protecting the king side. White continued with a takes b4, bishop takes b4. So either capture with the bishop or the pawn is fine, but bishop takes b4 comes with tempo on the queen, and also allows black to continue pushing the a pawn. We have c3, bishop back to e7, and bishop g5. So bishop takes e6 is also possible, with the idea that e takes d5 with fork, knight and bishop. But there's still the big question of what to do with the move a3. 
So here bishop g5 was played by Ferruja, trying to eliminate the dark square bishop, which is controlling the a3 square. But black avoids the trade with bishop d6. We have pawn takes d5, e takes d5, rook h to e1, and a4. So white cannot stop this a3 idea. Ferruja desperately tried knight to a3, but the knight was simply hacked off the board. Bishop takes a3. And now queen d6, looking at this pawn. And this looks lost for white. If he tries queen to b2 to defend a pawn, then the rook simply comes to the b-file, rook b8, and rook b3. And this wins the game. If king b2, again rook b8 check, king a2, rook b3, double attack on the b-pawn, and if queen to c1 defending, simply rook takes f3, now threatening the bishop, also threatening the pawn on c3, and this is game over. So here Ferruja tried king to c2. There are many ways to win this position, but Clouds concluded the game with rook b8, rook b1 from Ferruja, and now queen g6, skewering the king and rook, and forcing resignation. If queen to d3, then you can simply trade, trade rooks, and rook takes f3, wins the bishop, and that is a whole piece. Very well played by Clouds. He sees the initiative with the move queen to b8, and the idea of pushing a5 and b4 proved to be devastating. So congratulations to Kaido Kulauts for a fantastic performance. This victory in Moscow now qualifies him for the Dortmund Super Tournament later in July. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.